Kia Farm. So if you are following the trial of Derek Chauvin, then you may appreciate this counter message. Kia ora te whanau and welcome to Green Tea Insanity on the road. Okay, so I'm in the car right now and I am not driving, so I will repeat that for the jokers out there. <laughs> you have to chime in even though I've said <laughs> something. I'm not driving okay, so uh, safe to do this, but it does mean there is background noise. Just felt moved to share this with you, my loves, um, particularly those of us who are, for whatever reason, maybe we are black ourselves, maybe we really love our black whanau, our black family, and we feel moved to follow the trial of Derek Chauvin. I'm making this for you, okay? So anyone else who, you know, that does not apply to, you're free to skip this one, okay? Um, So, I wanted to just share a couple of thoughts, really. I don't know how encouraging this is going to be, really, because, you know, you guys know, I think, who follow my content closely enough will realise I'm pretty much a realist, you know? I'm not... I don't sugarcoat stuff just to get likes and shit. (laughs) A lot of people do that. There's enough of that in the world already. I don't want to add to the pile of BS. I think what I wanted to say was mostly, you know, does have a hopeful note and really just speaks to the resilience of black people. I would argue that, you know, we have had to be too resilient throughout evolution (laughs) in the way that you know so many of our people in different eras in different ways have been oppressed you know that the knee on the neck is such a devastating metaphor for in my view the reality of being black really anywhere right now in the world I would say it might sound super dramatic and I'm not saying that every black person on the planet is a risk of having a cop sit on their neck no I'm not saying that and if you are that simplistic then really you probably should be here anyway but what I am saying is that such a public assassination if you will of a human being of a particular race of the male gender in such a callous manner and with such slow moves towards anything resembling justice is a powerful indictment on our culture and although it happened in a particular time and place I lived in a part of America that I have a close family member living in so although I am a world away from all that it's also close to home and that's the nature of our world now we are all connected we have always been all connected it's just that now the internet and many other uh, technologies in our world has made it more obvious to us but the truth is we are one we are one and the same uh, which always makes me laugh when people say oh you're racist you know blah 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 it's like just f off you know you, you just you're too dumb for this for our for our community you shouldn't be here <laughs> it's so stupid and short-sighted and it clearly doesn't consume my content doesn't have a freaking scooby-doo about who i am really i mean this is not for you okay just to be super clear but getting back to this message my loves for my soul food whanau and this is who i'm obviously making this content for for us for any of us who are moved by what we're hearing and the devastating truth that is emerging um that has been captured on in evidence through testimony from witnesses I mean, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and yes, it would be heartbreaking, regardless of any person, whether they were white, you know, black, Chinese, whoever. But obviously, from my perspective, what I'm saying is that this was very much a symbolic execution of a human being and will, will have, did cut deep for many of us and maybe those of us who are black feel it the most right empathy is wonderful and very important and i you know so for example just on another note a similar note but another note you know the the rise in hate and hatred and hate crimes against asian people is is equally abhorrent to me 
um, and painful and hurtful, but it, I, I can't say it cuts me in the same way. And I'm sure that most people who are honest would, and not, who are not black or who do not feel proximity to their culture um, would really, if they were being honest, would have to say the same thing. And that's just the nature of being human. You know, it's why the, you know, people who run marathons for cancer charities, they're usually running it because they've lost someone to cancer, not because they decided that that was a, a good thing to do and a worthy cause. Of course, there are people who do that, but do you get my point? And so I think there is something uniquely painful about witnessing or choosing to um, learn about the nature and the intricacies of this case and how vicious a crime it truly was and we already went through it watching watching it unfold many of us watched the footage I don't think I watched it in full I saw enough I think especially for all of us um, we need to be really mindful of our mental health and you know this is partly why I'm making this content for you um, as a counter to the what can become fixation you know um, it, it's too easy when there is so much emotion involved for us to get fixated on what we're hearing and there is a risk of vicarious trauma here would be too easy for that to go unnoticed and for individuals to find themselves feeling totally overwhelmed in that awful sorrow and uh, you know really a, a, a speck of that fear and hurt and terror of understanding just by virtue of being human here so we can we can be a bit more general anyone could empathize with can you imagine you know that experience I mean it's horrific so what I mean to say is my loves please be mindful of consuming of what you're consuming of making sure that you are not going beyond what is actually good for you it's fine to be informed and to want to understand more of the case and to follow it there's no harm in that but you have to really have good self-awareness to make sure that that doesn't get to a place of overwhelm so coming back to this note of hope which is our resilience and which is the fact that if you look around the world you know Asian people who have been oppressed and we're seeing more of that in the wake of the pandemic that kind of hurtful hateful um, acts that are being perpetrated against those people still despite the obstacles you know those that people continue to flourish around the world and so this is not about saying, oh, well, it's all all right because we're all doing OK. And, you know, Beyonce exists, Oprah and Free exists so we can all go home and feel good about ourselves. That is not what I'm saying here. What I am saying, however, is that those people should and do no doubt inspire many of us. And may that, you know, long may that continue. And in a way, the, those of us who rise to such heights become beacons of hope and inspiration for us all or at least to me that that is what these incredible living legends um, speak of just the power and strength of our resilience and in a way that is really the message I, I hope that you can draw from even in the midst of witnessing you know what we are seeing what what we are learning unfolding in this case and you know on another note of humanity we can also draw hope and strength from everyone can can do this but we can draw hope and strength from the fact that so many people tried to help George so many people saw his humanity even though the murderer did not see it and frankly you know as a psychotherapist from the get-go and I've made other content on this many of you will have already seen those videos but you know in order to to commit such an atrocious act arguably one has lost touch with the their own divin divinity with their own humanity um, you can only you can only be subhuman to treat another person as a subhuman 
we heard about the off-duty firefighter who tried to render aid and there are countless others you know the woman who captured the young woman who captured the actual horrific footage I believe from beginning to end who I actually myself tried to reach out to to offer um, psychological support to and yet the the hurt and the trauma of 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 witnessing such an atrocious act, such a brutal, violent murder is really beyond the pale to consider. So even in darkness, there was humanity, even in that dark hour, in those over nine minutes long, there were people who, who wanted to help George, who do not see black people as less than animals. One would hope that no one would ever treat an animal in the way that George, George's body, George's personhood was treated. And yet we all saw what we saw. And as I say, I think one of the reasons why it was such a devastating crime is because many of us appreciate uh, that the callousness with which it unfolded was not just happenstance or coincidence, but rather you know, a kind of coalescing of eons of hatred um, and anti-black racism, which continues to this day around the world. Another place from which we can draw hope and strength is knowing that George in his death has become no longer this symbol of a focal point of the hatred and racism to many of us black people, particularly those of us who are dark skinned black people feel, whether that's on a subtle level or in overt acts of racism, that we are all too often in my view expected to simply accept and um, even apologize for and to make excuses for those who have you know, perpetuated those acts against us. And these are often, you know, in our, in our common daily life, are, are called microaggressions. But this is something that I've begun to question that term. And I think in one of my recent videos, I changed it to, you know, macro, microaggressions, you know, off the basis of a really interesting conversation I had actually with a a Māori, young Māori academic who was speaking about this term as deeply problematic, the term microaggression. There's nothing micro about it. And in fact, I would heartily agree with that in that there is deep violence in those so-called microaggressions, the, the hideous looks cut us like knives and the those day-to-day experiences that as I say uh, particularly in the workplace and all sorts of places where we're just expected to uh, you know walk it off and have to give the talk to you know young black boys growing up in America uh, if you don't know what that is I'll just allow you to google google that in your own time but you know these are the this is the reality for many of us around the world I never ever think we should ex- accept these things. You know, I, I always, I, I grew up thinking about, you know, the teachings of Jesus Christ as they are laid down in most uh, religious texts. And one of the things that I always was struck by was how, you know, as an enlightened being, if you will, he would have known so many things before they unfolded. He would have appreciated perhaps you could say the, the the karmic quality of those who were being hurt or oppressed, uh, the woman who was about to be stoned and all of those things that had brought her to that point in her life. And still he interceded, still he, he did, he performed these miracles according to the teachings that most of us are given in religious texts. And that always struck me. He didn't just stand back and say, oh, well, that's your karma tough shit deal with it no and I think similarly whatever wherever we find ourselves in life yes we have some things in my view remember guys scientist and I'm also a yoga teacher so obviously that uh, 
perspective comes into play in my view this idea of karma for example i'm not saying you have to subscribe to it so don't start jumping up and down like rumpelstiltskin it's up to you what you believe and it's up to me what i believe okay you can stop listening now if you think oh she's talking a pile of crap fine all right but the, my point is is that even an enlightened being doesn't necessarily say well that i know why all of this is happening so there's no need for me to intercede no if there's an injustice happening then we can always step up we have our free will at least to a certain extent (laughs) and even if it is an illusion i'm going by some beautiful horses guys (laughs) sorry distracted there Even if everything is just delusion, it it still doesn't matter. I love what Gandhi said. And again, this is to my understanding, a quote quote that is um, assigned to him. You know, whatever you do in this world, and I'll have to paraphrase it because I don't have it exactly, but whatever you do is of little importance, really, in the grand scheme of things, you know. But it is very important that you do it. And so we never accept injustice and inequality for anyone if we are on a path of goodness and light and that should stand and even when it feels as though there is so little we can do we have to remember those people such as the lady the firefighter of duty who attempted to render aid you know she was allegedly threatened with a taser Uh, And the the quote that I read was something like from, I believe, the murderer. You know, if you were really a firefighter, you would know not to get involved in this. And again, that's slightly paraphrased because I don't remember the quote verbatim. You know, so again, just speaking to that callousness and yet that love, that humanity, and even putting herself on the line in trying to intervene and there were other people maybe we will hear more stories like that we hold on to that and we never give up understanding our divinity and our beauty and george has already changed the world he shook the world unfortunately it took george's death to shake the world and wake us up once again to become more aware again of Black Lives Matter. It it was too much for us to have to endure, for George to have to endure such a wake up. And yet that is the way it unfolded. And his legacy will go on forever, actually. I don't think we will ever return to the stupor. You know, and I say we, obviously, many of us were never in a stupor we we live as black beings every day there's no stupor for us we're we're wide awake right we're woke however this is on a on a larger scale there were protests around the world after he passed so we can draw hope from that always remember my dear one that you are beautiful you come from kings and queens you know i saw a map the other day an image of Africa which is a continent as many of us already know and within this image was captured America and China and I think Russia and many many other huge countries all contained in this one incredible land and we forget the roots of who we are we forget the roots of our humanity humanity as a whole and we must never forget we must hold on to that and know that we draw from a very deep wellspring of love and grace and divine intelligence that is eternal and so there is no knee in this universe that can hold us down with that my loves i thank you for listening if you have enjoyed this recording i would ask if you could do me a favor like it actually hit that like button and leave me a comment okay consider subscribing if this is your jam because there's more where this came from and i look forward to seeing you in the next video kia ora